Hi everyone, this is Christina Young with Lighthouse Ledgers and today we're going over how our WAVE accounting users can convert their books to cash method. Now, WAVE accounting is an excellent free resource for small businesses, but it does maintain an accrual-based accounting system. However, a large portion of United States small businesses actually use cash method as their accounting method. So we need to convert from accrual to cash prior to reporting taxes to the IRS or the state. Now this can get a little bit more complicated for businesses that have uh, customer deposits, prepaid expenses, or a large number of unpaid bills and invoices at the end of the, uh, the accounting period. So this tutorial will cover the basics, but please reach out to us at lighthouse-ledgers.com for help with more complicated transactions. So the first step for um, entering uh, these kinds of adjustments into your um, account on WAVE is that you need to be reviewing your bills and invoices to make sure that any anomalies or unresolved balances are, balances are first cleared out. So you can do that, and we have other tutorials to go over that in more detail, but um, you can do that by clicking on the invoices here. And you can quickly see if there are any balances that are overdue. Um, so like, for example, this one here with Doggy Paws, um, I would want to take a look and go, oh, well, we have um, either decided to void that invoice. Um, and so if this actually should not be on your books, then you'll want to go ahead and edit it, edit it and void it. Or um, say, hey, you know, actually that's a little bit older. I thought that they paid me. Just follow up on those kinds of things. Um, but if it is something that you're already aware that it is outstanding, then um, uh, that should be fine the way that it is. Um, it's just something where we're wanting to take a quick look at this. Then we take a look at the bills. And um, if you're a small business owner like me, then you already know what bills are outstanding. Um, but here's where you're going to look. Uh, they don't have the neat little paid unpaid for the bills section, but they do say um, here is uh, the amount due here and the amount due here. So you're just taking a quick look at this to make sure that there's nothing weird that you need to fix prior to um, entering in these adjusting journal entries. So the next step after reviewing this is to also make sure that your reconciliations have been completed through the end of the prior accounting period. So if we're doing this as a part of our year end transactions, we want to make sure that we have reconciled our bank accounts um, up through December 31st of the prior year. Um, that way we since the reconciliation is um, meant to help catch any kind of um, expenses or um, payments that were not entered into the system correctly, uh, making sure that you have the reconciliation done prior to step uh, moving forward to entering the adjusting journal entries helps make sure that um, nothing was actually missed. So you do want to do that ahead of time. So once you have those first two steps done, you'll want to move on to taking a look at your reports. So if we take a look over here, um, click on the reports here, and then wait for it to load. And we're mostly going to be working out of the balance sheet. So you want to click on the balance sheet here. And the accounts that you want to note are usually um, for the simpler um, kind of transactions that we're going to be covering in this tutorial, you want to be checking for accounts receivable and you want to be checking for accounts payable. So um, when you take a look here, oh, uh, I almost forgot to mention one really quick thing to do um, that is super important to make sure that your balances are correct is you need to change the report date to the last day of the accounting period. So for example, we're doing this for year end, so we're gonna change this to December 31st and then hit update. Otherwise it will default to whatever the current day is. So um, you see that that actually changed my balance here. That's because uh, one of the invoices that was um, created in December of 2015 wasn't actually paid until January. So um, as of the balance, balance sheet date on 1231 that actually is still due so um, you'll see that that will add that invoice back into our accounts receivable receivable balance so what we're going to do is um, 
as long as this number looks correct, you should be fine with using it. But if you want to see more detail about what is being covered, you'll see that um, the payment for 302 is not included and the payment for 272 is not included. So we need to um, do reversing, our, we need to do journal entries for those two transactions. And so what we want to do is make a note of the amount. So I'm writing down the 272 and the 302, and that is the total of the 574. Okay, and so next I'm gonna go ahead and go to accounting in order to start my first journal entry. Click on this tab over here that says journal transactions and you're going to add a transaction. And I like to go ahead and number these, so I'm gonna call this adjusting journal entry two. Adjust AR balances for YE for year end, 15 for 2015. And then I can hit Control A for, uh, to select all of it, copy it. And I need to make sure that the date that is being used here is going to be the last day of the prior accounting period. And then we're going to post, paste that in there. And what we want to do is we want to um, hit accounts receivable and we're going to credit accounts receivable for the 574. And then we are going to hit sales or whatever income account it is that you use. I think for these ones, I probably use bookkeeping services. So we're going to hit 574.00. And that is your uh, journal entry. So you want to credit what uh, the accounts receivable balance, and then you want to enter a debit for um, each of the income accounts that would be affected. So um, something that could be a little bit more complicated is let's say you are, you usually track um, your deli sales versus your coffee sales. Um, in those kinds of cases, you would, if you have different income uh, listed for that, then you would want to make sure you hit whatever it was that the invoice had originally hit. It can get a little bit confusing. That's why um, I do recommend that you talk to an accountant or a bookkeeper if you have um, some more complicated transactions. But for the simple purpose of this one, we'll go ahead and hit save. And now you'll see our adjusting journal entry right there. And then if you hit I'm going to hit save again. So now we're going to add a reversal. And we're going to have this hit um, the first day of the current accounting period. And you're actually going to put that amount back in. To those accounts. And I believe I said that this is bookkeeping services. So essentially what you did was you moved it from 2015 into 2016 um, so that you would be able to record that accounts receivable and the um, sale in the correct period for a cash method accounting system. So go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look back at our balance sheet for accounts payable. So if we click on the accounts payable down here, we'll see that we have um, two 
bills that are unpaid at the end of December. And that's 3,000 for a legal bill and 3.5,000 for a rent bill. So these are bills that have been received that you have not yet paid. Now we're gonna go back over to accounting, click on journal transactions, add a transaction, and we're gonna put adjusting journal entry and go with the next number. Adjust a P balance for year end. 2015, control A to select all of it, and then change this date to the prior period, which was 1231. And AP actually hits um, slightly different accounts. So um, what we're gonna do this time was we're gonna grab accounts, ah, there it is, accounts payable and we're going to post that in there. And the accounts payable amount is going to be 6,500, which is the total amount. And this time we're going to debit it. So um, for accounts receivable, you would credit it. For accounts payable, you would debit it in order to remove it. So, um, and then as you noticed, uh, we, we did actually note what accounts were being hit. So legal and professional fees, and this gives you a little bit of an example of um, what it looks like when you have to break it down for each line because you're gonna need to enter a credit for every single one of those expenses that you um, have still outstanding on your bills at the end of the um, period. So the first one that we said was a legal bill for $3,000 and then we also said that there's a rent bill for um, 3.5,000, so we're going to also change rent if I can find it here. There it is. Okay. And you'll see now at the very bottom that we're balanced, which means that the total for the credits equals the total for the debits. And then you'll hit save. And now we're gonna enter the reversal. And we're gonna have it hit the beginning of the year. And this time we're going to put it back into accounts payable. And I'm going to copy this because I'm lazy. Okay, so putting it back into accounts payable means entering 6,500 into the credit. And then we're going to look for a legal. Control V, 3,000. Add a line, rent. some reason the tab didn't go where I wanted it to. That's the kind of the thing with a free system also is it can be a little bit buggy. So as you can see, I put the amount back into legal and rent expense at the beginning of 2016 so that it's all fixed. And uh, we're gonna hit save after we confirm that it is in balance, which it is. And now you have your four adjusting journal entries for changing um, your balances from accrual to cash. So this covers the basics, like the very basic, on how to convert way of accounting from accrual to cash basis accounting. I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you need additional assistance or have suggestions for another tutorial video, please feel free to reach out to us at lighthouse-ledgers.com. We are passionate about helping small businesses achieve balanced books without sacrificing a balanced life. Until next time, we wish the best to you and yours. Thank you.